Hi guys, what's going on? It's Monday morning, back in the shop, trying to get ready for for the week. We have so so much to do this week. It's not even funny. And uh, just got back from uh, Colorado this past weekend. Spent some time at the Walker family reunion. Uh, that was that was awesome. It was fun to meet everybody, and it was fun to just kind of see. Uh, just kind of how the company has progressed got to go through the uh walker manufacturing kind of see how things are made and just talked with a bunch of different people and uh, i'll have another video on that uh coming up here probably later this week and uh, kind of showing my experiences there at the walker family reunion so the first thing i had on my to-do list today was to change the oil on the right it's got 158 hours i think it is the one thing i wanted to do is when we got the right it didn't have one of the uh, drain hoses for the oil and all it had was the bolt that was in there and uh, it kind of makes changing the oil pretty messy this bolt kind of got rounded off so I couldn't get it out of there it's pretty tight quarters it was it was a pain in the butt I was I was not happy this morning but anyway let's just go over here I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about all right so as you can see this is the this is the new hose but there wasn't a hose on there to begin with so like I said, it's pretty tight in there, as you can, you can kind of tell. It's really hard to even get a wrench in there. So this got rounded off and it made life very, very difficult. And um, I fought with it and fought with it this morning. I finally got it off. What I did is I took a, uh, a socket that was just a size lower, pounded it on there. Um, it took me a while to get it on there because you can't, you can't go on there straight. Um, you kind of have to go at an angle. So I just, finally I just got mad enough and I just pounded the crap out of it and it got on there, took the impact, got it off. Anyway, got the new hose on there. So one thing I want to suggest to Wright, if you guys are watching, anybody at Wright Manufacturing, anybody with this Vanguard engine, please do not forget to put the hose on there. Uh, it makes life so much easier and it's just a headache changing the oil. It's really messy. Um, and it's just hard to get in this on and off with just a, you know, a, just an open wrench because there's just, there's no way to get, get it in there straight. So anyway, that's the problems I'm having. But other than that, we're good to go. Let's see here. I got, what does that say? It's kind of some chicken scratch. 168 hours are on this machine already. Uh, we've been using the, the heck out of it. But here you can kind of see how it's kind of hard to get in there straight because of this plate right here. So this is definitely going to make life a lot easier. So anyway, today we're going to go out, get some mowing done. Uh, like I said, I was gone over the weekend. So uh, we, got, we got a little bit of catching up to do. The guys are out already mowing and uh, let's get to it.
So I wanted to see how long it took me to mow this place, this area right here. And what we're going to do is later on today, we're going to go back to the shop. We're going to map it out and see how many acres this is. This is one hour and three minutes. So one hour and three minutes. That's with picking up trash and everything. So this whole middle section right here. So I'm interested to go back and see how big this, this one section right here is and see how long, basically see how much I can mow in one hour. All right, so we're back here at the shop. Let's go upstairs and see how big area that was. I'm actually really interested to know. Whew, feels pretty good in here. Okay, so it was 119,689 square feet. Sounds like a lot. All right. See if you guys can see that. There it is. And you can see I outlined it all right there. That was the area. Okay, so that is 2.74 acres. I actually thought it was going to be more than that. I don't seem that impressive now. Almost three acres in one hour. Oh, that seems like a, seems like a fair amount. All right, so now I want to measure everything I mowed today. Okay, so six hours today, I roughly mowed 749,000 square feet. So you can see all the way over here from all the way, there's little bitty stretch, stretches in this big area and that big area. I got mowed all today. Now, keep in mind, you got the streets in there, so that's gonna eat up a little bit of square footage, but uh, the majority of that is all grass. So that's 17.2 acres I mowed today in about six hours. There it is, there's the square foot that I mowed, there's the acreage. That seems a little more impressive than almost three acres in one hour. I don't know, what, what would that come out to be? Let's, let's figure that up. 17.2 divided by six. Actually, that comes out to right about the same. 17.2 divided by six comes out to 2.86 acres per hour is what I averaged today. So that's just kind of a rough estimate. You know, the time is kind of a rough estri estimate. It might have been maybe six and a quarter, and you know, the acreage is probably a little less if you take away the streets. So let's just say two and a half acres per hour. I bet you, I bet you that's that's pretty pretty average what I can do with that mower. Okay, now so let me show you real quick what we have left to do on this property. So you can see right here, this is what I mowed today. This little section right here, those little circles. Okay, uh, that's that's definitely the biggest part. So what we have left to do is this right here, these these little sections right there. Then we come down here. There's a little bitty stretch right there, and then we do this, you know, these sections right here. We don't go on that side of the street at all. We just stay right there, and so we got this right here, this that and that that's what we got left so and the majority of this is all trimmed out uh, Brett even mowed some over there a little bit but we got this all trimmed out and I think half of this side is already trimmed out so we should be able to finish up the rest of it tomorrow uh, with three guys and we should be done with that one
And I know a lot of you guys have asked me, how did I get city properties? How do you bid them? All that kind of stuff. Uh, basically what happens in my area is you have, uh, uh, we have, we have one big company here that kind of gets all the city properties. And uh, I think they got close to like seven or 800 acres that they won uh, this year. And what they do is they sub all that out to other people. And uh, obviously they, they get their little, their little piece of money and we get our, our you know, our, our money. Um, but the one thing I really like about it is, you know, basically they give you a sheet and all the properties listed on there, the acreage, everything, what's expected. And they also give you the price. You know, here's, here's what we're willing to pay you. And you can kind of choose what you want to do. Now, there's a couple, I think last year that I, that I chose that I didn't do a very good job. So uh, this year I was a little bit more diligent with kind of looking at the properties and, and doing it that way. And you know, these properties here, I'm making some pretty good money on, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of expenses that goes into doing properties this big. There's a lot of fuel, uh, you know, the, the labor, all that kind of stuff, you know, sometimes it just, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. You know, it's, it's hot outside. Guys are dragging a little bit. And uh, you know, there, there's a fine line between being lazy and being tired and uh i try not to cross that line with my guys i try to i try to always give them the benefit of the doubt because when it's when it's 100 degrees outside and you're out there you know you're working these big properties and when you're doing these big properties like this there, there's no there's no breaks sometimes you're clear across you know you're you're five blocks from where the truck is so uh you know it's not like doing singles to where you're you know, you do a house, you get back in the truck. You do a house, you get back in the truck. You're outside for long periods of time. And, you know, I tell my guys all the time, if you need to take a break, take a break. Get in the truck, start it up, sit in some shade, whatever you want to do, I don't care. And I, I usually leave them alone when it comes to that kind of stuff. Because um, I just, I don't want to push people to the brink of getting sick. You know, that's just, it's not worth it. So, um you know, this stuff has definitely been a learning curve for me. Um, you know, I definitely do not have it all figured out, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, we're starting to kind of see some good results and we're starting to kind of make some money. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can just kind of keep it up. In the last video, I kind of said it might have been a bad decision um, to take on these properties. And honestly, I'm just not sure yet. Um, we'll see how the year plays out, but um, not sure I'm going to be doing this anymore after this year. It's a lot of work, guys. It really is. It, it's just a lot of work. It's really hard. Um, and, you know, when, when guys don't show up or you're short on help, that puts a really, really big strain on everything else with these big properties. Um, you know, I just, I don't have the manpower. I don't have the the money to have extra guys on staff. I know some big companies around here, they do that. You know, I've talked to, you know, bigger companies. They say, oh, you know, we're, we're kind of overstaffed by four or five guys because we know a guy or two won't show up every single day. And I'm like, that's great. I wish I could do that, but I can't. Um, that would just take away all my profits. So, um, you know, when, when you're a small company, you got three or four guys working for you, and you're doing big stuff like this and one or two guys don't show up or they're late or something, it really, really puts you in a bind. It really does. So uh, I think we got a good team right now, but you never know. You never know. So anyway, I'm gonna end the video right there, guys. We'll see you later.